Celebrity Book Club. You filthy whore Your husband's gone And we've got books And a bottle of wine to kill It's Hollywood It's books It's gossip I'm shook It's memoirs It's martinis It's Studio 54 It's Celebrity Book Club Come read it while it's hot Celebrity Book Club Tell your secrets We won't talk Celebrity Book Club No boys are allowed Celebrity Book Club Say it loud and proud Celebrity Club. Buzz me in, I brought the Cuervo. Hey, hey best, best friend. friend. <gasps> Come on, Talevu, bitch. <laughs> How are you? That's me trying my uh, central Pennsylvania accent. <laughs> oh, you're still on Harrisburg time after your wild, raucous trip to central PA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which you'll <laughs> definitely be hearing about in the VIP lounge, <laughs> Biatch. <laughs> I have decided that this the PA accent because I'm always like, what is it? And then like Mayor of Easttown came out and like people were like, oh my God, Kate Winslet's doing the accent. I was like, okay, it's sexy baby. <laughs> Naughty, sexy baby. Wait, like millennial sexy baby? Like mm. like, like Regina Spector? Like <laughs> not quite. <laughs> no, more sexy baby, like wow, wow. Like I want cigarettes. <laughs> like badass. Like I wanna. <laughs> I want cigarettes. And oh, there's water. kind of a knees list. I mean, water is like the big one that everyone Wooder's says. Water's the big it's one. Like, yeah. But yeah, when I was over here, people, I was like, "Wait, are you Southern? Do you have a speech impediment?" <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, "But it's then it's like kind of New York, and then it's like sassy." You're like, "Yeah." And now you know it's this like beautifully cultural rich heritage. Exactly. Um, okay, wait. So you were speaking about water in Central PA with amazing people of Dutch experience. You know, I'll just give you every club kid just a little spec. Um, I was staying at the Crown Plaza, Harrisburg, wonderful, um, lower to medium priced hotel. And when I got there, um, I saw many gay men in full leather. And I was like, (laughs) huh, this is fabulous yet random. Why are you guys here? (laughs) So I had to google.com and see that my hotel is hosting the Pennsylvania Leather Daddy and Kink Convention this weekend. (laughs) Just completely by accident. Just literally by accident. Wow. It's kind of like a motorcycle and leather daddy organization. The nexus of the two. Yeah, it started in the 70s. I learned the rich history. When I think of leather daddies, of course, you think of it's really more of an aesthetic. You don't think of them riding the bikes that often. Yeah, I feel like it started out as bikes. Right. The, the many, you know, men I met at the brightly lit hotel bar, <laughs> they all seem to be a lot of them using canes. So maybe they were right. <laughs> they were using the motorcycles back in the day. Right. Um, and then the younger fellows. Yeah, I don't know. Everyone was definitely like leaving the hotel, like putting all of their boards and equipments and like pup toys like back in just like such a Kia Sportage, like medium SUV. No one was like riding away. <laughs> <laughs> Loading up the back of the Sportage with all my harnesses. <laughs> and again, just one more little tidbit. Just iconic. This guy comes out, pup hat, just like leather jacket and tie-dye shirt with a plastic fire hydrant and tells everyone, don't touch my fire hydrant because that has all my toys in it. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, wait, it was like a carrying case. Yeah. But it's it also for like a pup to pee on if he wants to be really puppish. <laughs> you know what I did? I headed to Amazon.com and one <laughs> is coming to your apartment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always just like having this mixture of like disgust and jealousy when I see pup play happening in my community. And I'm just like, there they go. And like, they sometimes wear these little tails that like go in their ass and come out like with a tail. And they're so like growling and ro rolling around on the ground and having masters. And it's like, oh, maybe there is such a freedom there. But then it's also just like, you're wearing this full sort of rubber pup mask all day. You're jealous of their... Their freedom. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The freedom to explore your kink and be so public and just indulgent with it. At the same time, of course, then I think about the logistics and how tired you might get um, and how you kind of enjoy it for 45 seconds. And then you're like, OK, I'm, I'm done growling now. I think I'm out of growls. The whole thing with like kink world is like there are so many rules. So I feel like time is really regimented. I don't think you're freewheeling, you know, up and about in this leather mask all day long. Well, I've been to queer music festivals where it, there's someone is basically in a pup mask the entire weekend. They're also on G the entire weekend. So they, <laughs> which again is like a classic example of like regimented fun because then you, you have your timer going off every 45 seconds. Right. And I overheard this pup thank another daddy for making non-alcoholic jello shots. You know what that says to me? G. Because oh, that, oh, that is says like, a lot, well, a lot of the time you don't drink on G because it's actually like super dangerous. So it's kind of like pick one a little bit. I'm also obsessed with calling non-alcoholic Jello shots. It's like that's Jello. <laughs> so it's so it's j Jello. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about rough, rough. I think also the reason why maybe you don't want to do the pop culture is because I'm such a cat person. Exactly. May some call you a cat daddy? Oh God, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 35. Aren't I still a cat otter? <laughs> yeah, um, I do love cats and I grew up in a house with them. And you know who else loves cats is the subject of this week's book that we read for our famous podcast where we read a book every single week. Every single week. And we are talking about none other, king of the cats, king of the meows, purr of the litter box. Star of Animal Planets, my cat from hell, Jackson Galaxy, and his his book, Cat, cat Daddy. Daddy. What the world's most incorrigible cat taught me about life, love, and coming clean, which is obviously an indicator that he was an addict and he did embrace sobriety through some feline intervention. Me, yeah. It's a book about finding yourself. Yeah. I mean, as with all like uh, sort of basic it's memoirs, it's, it's, it's he's the same structure where it's like he was down and out. And then he found Jesus, in this case, a cat and not religion and kind of like turned away from the religious side of AA, but then still got sober and then like found his true calling. Although what I do like about this book is it's not really so much about him getting famous. It's actually really literally only about cats. Yeah, it's pre that. And it's also really not about the childhood. Like you get a little bit of that and it's referenced throughout about how like he grew up with a hardworking working class Hungarian mm. 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 father who had a cookie factory and his father sold cookies and he went to school and, you know, he worked hard. So then, you know, it's classic, you know, immigrant comes, sells cookies. Then... You have the son, and he wants to be a rock star. And the son is this near do well, so he lives in Den. Sorry, Boulder, Boulder, Boulder. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wow. And the fact that you think, oh, Boulder and Denver are the same city. I know they're very different. I apologize, <laughs> Coloradians, and your gay mayor or governor or whatever. What's his name? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Back to Jackson. So Cat Daddy is this huge, he kind of reminds me of my daily departed Uncle Frank in this way. Like this mm. huge, tatted, big, like plugs, eccentric. like eccentric, goatee, alt guy who's just like living in a warehouse that is on the rock scene and is like in this experimental noise band and loves animals. But yeah, so this book is very much about like obviously Boulder. Of course, it's just like the most alt place. I mean, I love that he's just being like, I thought my whole life was going to change when I moved to Boulder. This was where the rock scene was happening. I mean, same. Look, if you know me <laughs> and you know Boulder, you 
know if you're a jam band experimental noise musician, you gotta move to Boulder. <laughs> um, I googled like Boulder's rock scene because I was like, what are the were the local like Boulder bands? But then like only this article about like Ani DeFranco coming to Boulder came up. So. <laughs> Can you guess the name of his band? Oh, yes. Okay, hold on. The Pope called the circus once. Wait, okay, it's almost that. It's Pope of the Circus Gods. <laughs> Pope of it, like, it, there's something also, I would say, like, 90s music video culture and also very Jenny Schechter of the L word, like, to use pre-Instagram filter, like, ultra saturated with like a twisted yep. circus happening behind you and then a grunge guy being like feeling like the clowns are coming for me <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's such a good like three doors down impression yeah. <laughs> No, it's so that because it's so just like, what does this like alt Gen X people think is like so badass? You're like, you know what? We're going to make fun of religion. <laughs> Like when your band's name is a full sentence, it's very like, and every track is 19 minutes long. It's, I was a little bit surprised because his look is so rockabilly with his, like his current look. It's like he always carries his cat. So if you watch his show, My Cat from Hell, which is probably in like a 19 hour marathon right now on the animal planet, he walks into every home he goes into with cat toys in a guitar case. And he's always in like a, you know, like a, a work shirt with like a leopard print collar. And it's very, like, guitar leopard print, but he, like, runs a little more on the jam band alt side. Yeah, he's a little less, like, Palm Springs vintage and just, like, a little more messy warehouse. He was living in a warehouse, so when we find him, he's living in a warehouse, no windows. He already has also multiple cats. Like, he's already a cat person. And just to, like, to fill you guys in, if you don't know... The basically yeah. my cat from hell it's like he's a cat whisperer so people have these really crazy badly behaved cats that are like so hissy and scratchy and don't want to be pet and he comes to your house and he teaches you how to like not train your cat but like understand your cat and like and create an environment in which it will thrive and like will be closer to you and usually involves just like getting a ton of cat toys and like installing so many shells and turning your entire house into like a crazy cat the craziest like ugly (laughs) like obstacle course (laughs) with (laughs) like (laughs) well which and again we'll get to this in the vip lounge but the cat bookstore that i went to in harrisburg pa that had a full ceiling tunnel system for the cats to walk along above everyone Uh, i'm so jealous I mean, I do want that and I do want cats. <laughs> no, and it was like a big Himalayan, like so high up on like a clapboard and like a woman being like, ha, ha, yeah, that's Queen Anne. She doesn't like people. And no, she's not coming down from her throne. <laughs> <laughs> so Jackson, it's interesting you said bad people call him because their cats are badly behaved. Yeah. What Jackson teaches us in this book is it's not that the cats technically are badly behaved. It's that something is thrown off. Often it's a change of environment, change new of environment. baby, new home. They don't feel safe in their space. They're anxious. They're reflecting what you're feeling. Right. The A, they're, they're reflecting what you're feeling. They're huge reflectors. They're mirrors. B, we project all of this. We like try to um, anthropomorphize them too much. We like get angry at them. And then we create more negativity because like we think that they're like, you know, mad at us for doing something. And it's like, that's not how cats think. Cats are stupid like they are they have the intelligence of like a one and a half year old baby so it's like they're not responding like that like you can train them to respond to different things in the environment but ultimately you need to treat them like the cats they are and that's why he started this company called little big cats because it's like ultimately they're lions they're cheetahs they're panthers they need to hunt they need to catch they need to kill hunt gather kill prey i think the biggest lesson and what he teaches people on the show is like a lot of times if your cats are acting out Let's say, oh, you have a gorgeous picture frame of your favorite cousin on a mantle. And if Fluffy walks over and knocks that down, that's because, like, probably, like, you're not playing with Fluffy enough. Exactly. Fluffy needs to play. You need to engage them. And I know when Orzo starts acting up and kind of knocking glasses and stuff like that, it usually is... I guess just early in the morning when she walks <laughs> and we're still asleep. Right. And those transitional times are big for cats and that's where they have a lot of excess energy and you need yes. to channel that energy into productive behavior like hunting and playing. That's 
their whole lives. So if you're not throwing a cap or letting them kind of catch and then giving them the treat after they've done well, then they're, they might wreak havoc because they're like, what's going on here? So back to Jackson for a second. So he's in Boulder. So he is like kind of this messy, like smoking a ton of weed, just like constantly drinking and then like doing Xanax and Klonopin. It's like, it's just is so <laughs> 90s jam band. Like he's like, I'm passing the bong around with 20 people in a windowless home there's like 30 uh, there are cats like roaming around like he has cats and he's like works at a pawn shop he works like for a window installer and nothing like everything is just like so he can like buy some cat food buy some more weed and like play his music and he's like doing coke in his bedroom and like crinkling paper while he snorts it so that his roommates won't hear him snorting it and then he like won't have to share his coke with them but then it's like weed is too stankonia so you have to share and you have to go out into the like common area and be like all right let's rip this bong as roommates yeah that was really really dark really dark and it's like all his lesbian roommates are constantly finding him like asleep in his own vomit (laughs) no thank you for saying that it's like anytime he mentions a woman like he will say like if he thinks like a chick is hot or like and we'll get to the sex scene um but like when he references women you're like that has to be a lesbian this bolder woman named jen and beth he's like so yeah (laughs) beth and i were always passing back the bong (laughs) wait beth is the most lesbian name because it's like i feel like elizabeth is this really amazing kind of like gender rubric because it can be so many different versions and like beth is the lesbian version of elizabeth yes and i feel like Lizzie is so closeted lesbian as a teen. Yes. Big hoodie, like braces, puka shell. Right. You're Lizzie. And then like you shave your head, get an acoustic guitar, smoke a bog in your Beth. Then when you go non-binary, it's just L. Or B. Or B. Yeah. Just capital B. Capital B. <laughs> and then Eliza is more just like nerdy. Bye. like. Oh, party by party by or just like straight. Isn't that more just just Liza is party by? I guess I think Eliza is more party by than Liza. Liza to me is like a mom. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and we're gonna cool. go through every All right. single form. <laughs> I mean, I the Liza I know is like a the, funky, the Liza I know. I know is like, <laughs> and her cat likes to be spanked. Like I've seen her pet her cat, and like it does really like like an ass kind of slap. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Kinky. <laughs> yeah. Rare. Smack that boot. Hey, anyway, tell us in the comments what forms of Elizabeth are like gay or bi <laughs> or party yeah. bi or straight girl. <laughs> but yeah, so he has a like a bandmate named Beth who's Also a fellow user. And then when he gets sober, she's like, you need to move out because I'm not going to like live with your sober ass. So what really changes his life is a job opening at a Boulder shelter opens up and he applies. Here, let me just read a little passage of him getting ready for his interview. I walked into interview at HSBV. Therefore, after the restaurant, after the pawn shop, after the tape cleaning, after the rock carrying, more confident than I've ever been in an interview before. My tattoo sleeves were just beginning to take shape, but still, I felt I had no reason to hide who and what I was. My name was Jackson Galaxy. I liked <laughs> big jewelry. I wore Elton Johnish glasses, and I had a head full of dreadlocks dyed every color of the rainbow with African. African trade beads and various and sundry other toys laced through them. <laughs> Take me for my passion, I thought. Take me for my experience volunteering with animals. Absolutely invented, parentheses. And take me because nobody will scoop shit and pressure wash cages and care for animals in your charge for very little money better than I will. Bam. Wow. And they didn't take him because of those dreads. <laughs> they did not. And then there's that iconic scene when he he does shave off his hair because he's angry at these like Barbie and Ken across the way. These like this total like Chad like couple is like sunbathing on their hot, boulder yeah. balcony. These hot boulder locals. And of course, like any 90s Gen Xers, what do we hate? Number one, religion. Two, 
bush. <laughs> <laughs> Three fucking blonde sheeple. Okay? Yeah, and these sheeple told him to like turn down his jam band. He was like, fuck you. So he started throwing his dreadlocks at them. And then the Chad couple was like, ah, ew. And, so, and then he was just like, and that was the punk way that I like did make my hair more respectable for the shelter. But like, I didn't do it because the man wanted me to. I did it to actually fuck with Chad's. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, fuck yeah, question mark. And then like, of course, like then he does get another interview at the shelter and then they do hire him. And he's like, but I wasn't conforming for them. I know. It's a little bit just like, all right, calm down. Also, it sounds like everyone else at the shelter was also just, like, getting high afterwards. and like Yeah, he's, like, later, you know, when he's working there, he's, like, oh, yeah, like, we'd all go to, like, Lonnie's after and, like, get freaking, like, loaded to, like, clear off the day of, like, washing shit out of cages. And, I mean, the main thing also he has to convince the people who hire him is that he's like down with euthanasia. So wait, can I read the scene where he's first seen the other, the other burnt out nurse and she's killing the, um, not killing cause they're, they Sorry, are embryos or so they're not alive. Down. And I'm not, yeah. well, I also don't want to say that like fetuses are alive because like, I'm not having that conversation. Uh, not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> not on the Jackson galaxy. app. Oh, right. With the puppies. Yeah. Cause it's like, Yes. No. And those are not alive. I mean, at the, at the same time, though, I'm kind of just like, to me, that's not the argument. I'm like, I'm pro-abortion, but I also like, fine, say that a fetus is alive. Sure. Still kill it. Like, I'm pro-abortion. I don't yeah. need I don't need to be like. You don't right, need to lie and be like, oh, no, I would be anti if it was heart beating. Um, but this scene is very chilling. So, like, they're pulling these, like, feti out of this, like, pregnant puppy and then, like, immediately euthanizing them. And he, he calls it, like, the blue juice. The euthanasia that they... Oh, yeah. There was something like six or seven puppies inside this dog. The vet was pulling out the puppies and their embryonic sacs, and I would then inject the embryos with sodium pentobarbital, what we called blue juice. The embryos would turn blue, and then, this was 15 years ago, and I still remember what it looked like. I still remember the sound the puppies made when they hit the stainless steel bowl. Oh, yeah, that image. I'm like, the, the puppies in the bowl? Just these little, Sliding. tiny, slidey, embryonic puppies, like, inject them with blue juice, bam, hit the steel bowl. Twisted. Now all of a sudden we are becoming this like anti-abortion. We're like, no, yeah. How chilling does that sound? <sighs> no, I mean, you know, it's intense, no, no, and know. you, you know, and and you, you have to understand it. It's intense, but I think that's also just the and animal that's, and that's, kingdom. And ultimately, you know, that is what needs to happen. Celebrity book club. Lily, you've seen Kate Berlant's one-woman show, Kate, at the Connolly Theater, right? Oh, my God. Wait, do you remember those amazing boots she was wearing? The boots are the kind of unsung hero of the whole show, I feel. They're smart and sexy. They're very, like, single gal in the city. They're stomping on the stage. They're very powerful and yet fun and flirty at the same time. I actually ran into Kate. She was, she was wearing the boots from the show. So I had to ask her, Kate... Where are your boots from? The boots are from Le Bouc, and they're sponsoring this podcast. It's so chic. The The boots are made in Italy, so obviously they're going to be great quality, great design, the most amazing leathers. I mean... They're meant for real life, whether you're on stage or off. Kate, she's on stage every single night. That can't be easy on the old hoof, right? And yet, I don't hear her complaining about heel pain, arch pain. No. So go to lebouc.com. That's L-A-B-U-C-Q.com. And now if you the code five boots you'll get 20 percent off and, and by the way of course it, it's a small business it's mom and pop five years in they have super loyal customers and we want you guys to become their next loyal customer again labucq.com and use code five boots at checkout for 20 percent off. offer valid till saint patty's day boots So there's actually two things I thought was really interesting about his like perspective on this in terms of shelter world. First of all, he becomes a catist because he sees that shelters are incredibly dog focused. Yes. And I really appreciated that because yes. he was like, it's all about dogs, all about taking the dogs for walks. And they like, they really try to like, you know, play with the dogs. And like, everyone thinks about dogs needing to like go outside and play, but everyone thinks, oh, well, cats, they're so like the, bitchy. Oh, they Garfield. Can, Garfield over there. Yeah. They just want to sit in a corner. It's like, no, cats don't like Hunt. sitting in a tiny cage. Like Catch, they need as much. Pray, yes. Kill. Also, people talk about, oh, like the famous Sarah McLaughlin ad for the ASPCA. We all know it. 
where Angel plays. Oh. And it's like all these sad images. And it's being so no kill shelter. Well, oh, and this is, okay, the second thing, this I love when he calls out no kill shelters. And he's like, to the shelters that say you're no kill, but you're turn away blind cats because you know no yes. one's going to buy, like no one is going to adopt them. Like you are fake. You are phony. Please like suck a dick because that is the fakest thing ever. And I was just like, yes. Obviously in a perfect world, like we do not want to be like killing kittens and puppies, but it's also like, well, we're not in that world. And we're literally not. And there's like, and there's overcrowding, so like someone's gonna have to do it. Like, I don't think like the people, the kill shelters, are like hungry to kill puppies. No, but like it, it needs to be done. And if you're gonna pretend like you're not killing them, then you're not simply doing the population. Population will continue to be overpopulated. I do want to talk about TNR for a second. Well, I, I heard your boyfriend had a hot take on TNR. TNR is trap new to release. And it's basically like, you know, the current accepted methodology for how we deal with cat and dog overpopulation. You neuter or spay them, then send them back out so they don't reproduce. But his point is basically like, you're never going to neuter or spay enough to actually meaningful control the population. They fuck like too frequently and they have like too many babies in a litter every time. It's just, it's never going to be going to make a dent. I do totally see that point, but I'm also, I think the other side of that is that like it's painful for the cats. So neutering them, it's maybe not about the dent, but it's also making the cats out there who are feral having better lives. Cause it's like, you're seeing these cats out there who are getting pregnant over and over and over and then like dying from the pregnancy. And so you want her to like be this like fabulous tube side girl boss. Who's just like out there, like not yes, getting Kenji. pregnant all the time. <laughs> and just, she's just going to brunch and like living her life. Well, here, let's talk about an example. Let's talk about a cat I lived with. Turtle. Okay. Was turtle fixed? Had an abortion and then was fixed. Okay. And again, let nature take its course. But I feel like if she wasn't, you know, either she would have probably just like gotten pregnant like right after. Because also cats can get like pregnant while they're pregnant. I mean, I think that she's a special case because she was someone's cat. Like she wasn't a feral outdoor cat. Right. Even though her vibe... That is someone that I feel like... Also, I just want to talk about her as this cat because I feel like it's a very Jackson Galaxy subject. She was not necessarily friendly. No, but I feel like, not to brag, I was able to communicate with her in ways. Yeah, you jacksoned her. I, I feel like I jacksoned you her. Didn't well. put, like, you didn't put, like, too many human emotions onto her. You accepted her as a cat. I was like, you're this, like, crazy Bushwick Mansion cat, yeah. like, living with, like, all these artsy kids. And I knew it. People were always being like, oh, Turtle's crazy. Like, Turtle's unfriendly. And I just feel like I started slow. You know, you put out the hand. Let her smell. Well, did you do the I love you trick that he discusses? I did, yeah. At some point I did start doing the I love you trick, which is blinking in a rhythmic, soft pace to a cat to show them that you love them and they can trust you. It's invented by a woman named Anitra who wrote The Natural Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what you do is you say I with your, in your mind, you think the word I while your eyes are open. Then you close your eyes on the next beat. You think the word love. Then you open them again and you think the word you and you look at the cat directly with, as he says, soft eyes. It's kind of like smizing in like a Tyra way. Yes, it's very, it is very smizing. Um, no, I do this to cats all the time. And he says you should do it because he's like, cats don't meow at one another. They use it for us to get something from us. Famously, cats like literally meow only to talk to humans. So he's like, we owe it to them to try to communicate back to them. And so we do that kind of with ESP a little bit by just like thinking at them. But it works when he's in the shelter on that insane night and it's storming and like all 45 cats yes. are screaming and it's four in the morning and like the shelter's shaking in like a rocky mountain tempest. And he does the I love you trick to every single cat in a row. And then at like five in the morning, it's silent because they've all like calmed down. And back to your point about like how dogs are taken to play it out. Like he would be like, oh, I would notice the cats who like, you know, wouldn't nuzzle people when people came over in the cages or like just, you know, would be like scared and sleeping in their litter box. They don't get adopted because people are like, they're unfriendly. Right. And it's not that they're unfriendly. 
Okay. It's just that like no one is interacting with them. So then they're like scared and retreating. And I love how, you know, he's very practical when he talks about his work in the shelters. He's like, my goal was to get these cats in a position so they could get adopted so that they weren't anxious. They weren't upset. So that when people did the drive by and it's like people come to that shelter, they spend one second in front of each cage that every cat had its best chance possible of like seeming cute and adorable and like making a connection with a human who would take them to anywhere but here. Now, do you remember the process of adopting your childhood cats? So Nigel and Casper, who, who I loved so much, they we actually got them at a cat show. Okay, this is also <laughs> so both of us being like fully coastal elite. You got them at a cat show. I got like mine at like an insane breeder who lived in Framingham. Oh, and breeders are obviously so evil and they are like, <laughs> like no it was like this big woman in framing <laughs> and it was like <laughs> where we got cider spelled s-y-d-a-r my first abyssinian <laughs> um, <laughs> and like she bred abyssinians i think russian blues and bangles and it was just like oh you know i want a russian blue they're so fucking it is so crazy when you breed the sexiest cats but you have 27 of them in your home so <laughs> it be actually becomes not sexy <laughs> ultimately it's not yeah 27 abyssinians in a framing ham like vinyl sided home ultimately not that right. cute yeah nigel and casper who I love to death and we're so friendly and they were so. And, but I will say you guys got them together, right? We got them together. They're brother and sister. I think like I connect, I think children naturally connect with animals better because they don't do the anthropomorphizing thing. I think children naturally connect with animals better because they don't do the anthropomorphizing thing. Also their children are dumb. And so they're kind of more at the same intellectual same level. Same brain than, level. Yeah. And not relying on someone just so, like, if I didn't have my cat, like, or puddles here with me, like, I couldn't have gotten through, like, A, B, and C. Right. Just, like, a child is just kind of, like, cuddling. I mean, I didn't connect, I will say. Like, Cider was definitely more Gia's cat, and I didn't connect with him till we got Audrey, mm. our second obese Abyssinian, because <laughs> I saw that Cider got depressed. Mm. With her arrival, so I started with the, with the introduction of some of a new element. We follow Jackson's rules, which are separate for two weeks, mm -hmm. and then like slowly introduce what we didn't do. He suggests, which is smart, I think, feeding them. So you feed one cat on the other side of the door, and then you put the food right on the other side of the door for the other cat. So that they have meal time together, but they're not actually seeing each other. They're just smelling each other. I kind of want to do that with my with my lover. Like, I was going to say, it's like really sexy. Well, you know what you could do that? You could go to one of those traditional Japanese ramen spaces like that's like for commuters, like that oh. place in Bushwick where it's like you yes. have the solo booths. And so you and your lover each eat at a booth next to each other, inhaling each other's scent and the scent of the noodles. Hearing the slurp. The, sl <laughs> the slurp of a lover. But you're not looking at them. And then you're just like activating this sense that you rarely are activating. And Nigel and Casper, I feel like, got along famously. And Cider and Audrey did not get along famously. I mean, Cider was thrown into anorexia. Audrey into obesity. <laughs> there was domestic abuse. And I'm sure that each of their eating disorders like absolutely was... You know, it's like it was a mirror of each other. It was like he didn't eat because she ate. Yes. Well, she stole his food. So, <laughs> well, okay. Literally. So, quite literally. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> and then the anger. And it's just like, I think when you get two cats at the same time, right? He's like, what is happening? Who is this new gal? When I was really depressed in high school and I was on Accutane, which makes you depressed, I would go in these long jogs through Newton at night at two in the morning barefoot. And I didn't realize barefoot. Yeah, it was really cuckoo. Um, yeah. And both Casper Oops. and Nigel would like come on the run with me at different times. They would literally run along my side what? like a dog, not leashed. Like we would run through the neighborhood together. Wait, I never knew this. What, this is like full Disney movie, like iconic. <laughs> yeah, it was very Disney. I was like, and then like Casper like get in bed with me as I would just be like crying and have so much acne and be like so crazy. <laughs> Ru both of them or just Casper? She would usually sleep with me. No, but Nigel would go on the runs with me too. Two cats following you on a no, run. Well, they would, they would, 
each be my guardian on like a different run. They wouldn't. They run, would trade off. Be like they would run together. Girl, yeah, you they're like you take her tonight. She, <laughs> right. <laughs> she is going through. She, she's it. on one. She watched Alias for sixteen hours today. <laughs> But so back to Jackson, just for a second. I mean, it's just this book brings up so many different cat challenges. The way I would say, so he goes independent. He gets laid off from the shelter. And he was like, I'm going to become a consultant. He said he was getting like TV spots already and press. So I feel like the bold, like he did have an article in like the Boulder. Yeah. I mean, this was a time when if you got one like a press, it could really take you somewhere. It's not like nowadays when everybody and their mom has an has like a interview and interview, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like it could actually mean something. And so he's really down his luck. He's been fired. His car breaks down. His big Dell laptop breaks down. But he has his first job. So he has a full breakdown. He's like covered in sweat. His pants are ripped. He goes to this woman's house. They have twins and a cat that now is, like, clawing everyone. Mm -hmm. And the woman is like, I don't know what we're going to do. Jackson, being a cat detective, figures out that the cat is only staying at the staircase. And he's like, oh, he's protecting something. What is he protecting? The twins. He knows that. He senses the people. He knows that the twins are the most important thing in this house right now. He walks into the house and he's like, well... Like, the the cat is at the top of the stairs, like, at the top of the landing, and then, like, he starts to go up the stairs, and the cat lunges at Jackson and, like, digs his claws into his bald head and, like, bites him. But he's like, this is my one chance to, like, get a new client, so I can't act like I'm freaked out by cats attacking me. So he just, like, is so stoic and is, like, bleeding out of his neck and, like, skull from this insane cat. He just, like, very calmly just goes... I think that cat is guarding something upstairs. Right. He wasn't like, you know, oh, yeah, this cat needs is bad. And pretty simple. They move his litter and food downstairs. Oh, and by the way, moving things can have a huge effect. Yeah, mostly for the good. I moved Orzo's water. And like now oh, wait, she drinks. You're so Jackson. Cause I was like, I was yeah. like, why did y'all move that bowl of water? And you were like, well, now she comes in and hangs out with us and is less like being secretive about her water. And she's drinking her water in the living room and like socializing and associating like the thirst and the quenching of the thirst with, with, so, right. with humans. So it's like we were in our living room having martinis and she was just posted at her bowl. Having her own martini. <laughs> exactly. Very and wet. more hydrated. <laughs> Um, can we talk about when he has crazy sex with Jen? Yeah, I, I have the page pulled up. Horny for it. Okay, so the sad point, he's like, he isn't sober yet, but he's like, you know, being a cat consultant. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 wait. Are you on page 105? Yeah. When he, he's like, okay, <laughs> wait, 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 I went over to Jen's apartment where the two of us waited and waited for yes. her friend, dressed as if she was actually late to her Renaissance fair party next door. It's so Ren Fair. It's just it's like so be Ren more Fair. Ren Fair. It's like, wait, and I had originally, wait, that's so funny. I had originally read that as like she was going, gonna go. She was late for a Renaissance Fair, not just that like she was so Ren Fair. He was just being like, she was literally being so Ren Fair and so like Bustier. <laughs> The moment that door shut with the two of us alone, I was literally thrown against it. I turned Jen around and grabbed her by the shoulders. This was not going to be a gentle affair. The next few hours were an explosive horn blast that signaled the beginning of an affair that made the eruption of Krakatoa look like a spilled glass of juice. This threw me. You're really not, you know, and the cover of this book is him with a cat. And it's like includes tips for cats. Like you are not ready for this like sexy alt steampunk sex scene from him and Jen. No, this like dirty. I mean, it's so like dirty bisexual techie, like Ben geek vibes. Yeah. It's like, of course it's like, this is also like a super horny book. So also there's like a fun thing that this book does where it's like a bold like, like advice tip. And it goes a piece of non cat related advice. When the picture your girlfriend conjures up in your head is of a cartoon skunk, reconsider the relationship. Well, yeah. And he's being, <laughs> <laughs> He's basically saying also like his cat like because Benny hates the girlfriend. Yeah, Benny hated Jen and all of her bustiers, and so did Valoria. <laughs> <laughs> the cats, cat. Benny and Valoria. It's really just like I can't think of any of like a more like steampunk name 
for cats than Benny and Valor- Valoria. <laughs> Benny and Valor, and like Valoria is like his nicer cat. That like, but Benny is the one. Benny is the cat that like. Well, he's very top and bottom because he's like Benny is so aggressive, and Valoria was so tiny and thin, and like she loved to be chased, and just like if she's gonna cry and get chased, well then he's gonna chase her, and like he would just like terrorize her. Until he built, like, Benny, like, 18 more, like, cat condos and, like, fed him at different times and moved his litter box, like, three feet a day around the apartment. <laughs> oh, right, because when he moves, he's, like, inch by inch we move Benny's litter box. Oh, and we haven't even told – so the, the Benny story is basically he says Benny changed his life because, like – Benny was so like challenging and basically like a woman comes in and is like, I can't handle this anymore. Like this cat has a broken hip. I just can't do this. She tries to literally drop it off at the shelter and run away. Like so movie, like I'm dropping my like friend who's ODing off at the ER. People are monsters. People are crazy. It's like, right. It's kind of like no kill shelter, kill shelter. Like it's kind of an institution and like, you know, more to be dealt with, but just like a woman, like with a cat, like running away from a shelter. It's like, why the drama? I think it's actually more humane to take your cat out back, shoot it in the head than it is to drop it off at a shelter and run away. Take some fucking responsibility for the animals in your life. (laughs) Fully on board with that one. Uh, But it depends how sick the cat is. I guess it's just like, you know, sending it to a shelter is like almost certain death. And it's like a sadder death. It's just like, like the the majority. Ben is just gonna like the majority of the cats in shelters are euthanized. I mean, it's it's. You know what I hate when I see if I'm scrolling Pet Finder or whatever. What? When people say was given up because a family got a dog. Oh. And they didn't get along. That actually makes me want to murder. Well, it's very Jackson. It's just like you just did, you made no effort at all to acclimatize the cat to get the like animals to understand each other. You made this huge difference in these living creatures' lives and then we're just like they should just figure it out because I can. And you were like, oh, I got a cat because that's easy. And then you were like, me and the new hubs want a dog because we want to like take him hiking and boulders, like amazing hikeries. And then you're like, ooh, we, yeah, didn't do anything. Not getting along. This is hard. Bye. It's just like the cat is actually not a 35-year-old like marketing assistant. Like they don't have the logical faculties that you do. You need to make literally any effort. I also love that he always calls owners guardians. He doesn't like the word owner. Yeah. Which I think is really beautiful. It's very like, I feel like it's very like Native American, like steward of the land. Like we are stewards of creatures. Yes. Like we are just guiding these cats along in homes, but you don't own the cat. No. But so what Jen does though, is Jen brings Jackson to AA, which... Is Changes huge, things. yes, hugely important for him. Basically, he gets sober, but takes him a while. Then he like finally gets sober from clonopin, which was like the real addiction. Yeah, but then he turns a food addiction where he's having like three whoppers like for lunch, and then he does weigh in at four hundred pounds at one point. I do also wonder when he's listing the insane amount of drugs he does. I'm like. I feel like this is because he is a big guy and it's like... Yes, as a, I was like, how are you not dead? I think, at, yeah, at a certain point if you're like... Because he was like baseline was 250 and it's like, oh, then maybe you can do like all this coke and clonopin and weed and wine and tequila like over the course of the night, which is basically just like a normal like gay man's diet in New York on like a Friday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Watch me as I eat my way through Friday night. <laughs> and then, well, he's sober. So he, then that's when he really gets into fast food. Yeah. I mean, he has an addictive personality and I, and you know, it's real. And then there's a moment with him and Benny that changes when he's off the clonopin and he sees Benny and he realizes before he thought of Benny as like a bus driver. Oh, and right. he was like, you're not a bus driver. Yeah. You're a cat. You're not a cranky old bus driver. Wait, I think I, I found this part where he has this realization. Benny and I are both socially isolated, behaviorally unlubricated, two fingers on the same hand, caught in the massive gears. This is what differentiates sympathy from empathy. No matter how much I care for you, it's not until I recognize me in you and you in me 
that the veil of gauze is lifted on the world. I hit my knees and then I'm on my ass. The cheap floor of my mm. apartment shakes and Benny's ears turn 180 degrees away from me. The shame rushes in as the dream rushes out. I can't believe how selfishly I've been seeing him, how I've been holding him to human standards. Mm. Standards that are neither higher nor lower than cat standards, but completely irrelevant. Now that my brain is finally free from all the shit I was drowning it in, I see in the shock of a new connection how little I've truly understood him and I am filled with horror and shame all the time I laughingly dismissed his bus driver who fell asleep and woke up a cat looks he's shared my life for years and just now I realize the deep level of his frustration and anxiety mm. Mm. beautiful and he's just being like this is an anxious creature that is being made more anxious by the like smaller, thinner cat in my house, and like <laughs> Valoria. Yeah, Valoria also makes me anxious. <laughs> <laughs> the good kind of anxious, and yeah, and he realizes that cats are cats, and it's a really beautiful moment, which is beautiful. And he does go on to have like a weird business separation with like this <laughs> oh, other woman <laughs> that he starts the essential oils company with. Yeah, and he's like, no, and she was amazing, but like her heart problem was actually making it really hard for us to make joint decisions. Well, I was like, pretty impressed though because she was such a like a soothsayer and like such a Miss Cleo of cats because that one time that Benny was like dying and he brought him to the vet and they were like, oh, he's having a heart condition and he like, yes, yeah, she knew. and then she came in, she knew she was like, this cat is choking. And they're like, what? No, she's like an x-ray. And they're like, an x-ray could kill him with his heart condition. She's like, he's choking. And she's like, cat's going to die. Like, well, he'll die the other way. He's going to die on this table. God damn it. And it's like so dramatic in ER. And then he has a toy car in his larynx or whatever. Parts of this book could really be adapted into a motion picture film on like an Animal Planet original movie, yeah. I think. Yeah. I would love to see that. I mean, I have to say, like, this book was kind of shockingly, like, poignant and poetic and stunning. Yeah, it was much more, like, I think I thought it was me a lot more, like, tips about moving the litter box. But it really is beautiful about just, like, finding yourself, finding your passion. You know, it's also, like, not a linear way. Like, so much of this book, he has found his passion, but he's, like, still addicted to something. Or, like, relationships have gone awry. And then... Benny, who he's cared for for so many years, does pass. So he, like, takes him in to finally, like, give him his final shot. Um, I want him to remember being loved so much that all else will be forgotten. No episodic memory, just an unbroken lifetime of embrace. I lean in tight as I hear the vet enter behind me. I will tell your story. You hear me? I promise. I keep my promises, right? Insane thing to say to a cat. <laughs> the vet is hovering. I already don't like her. I tell him so, but say it's okay. Just another shot. You've seen plenty of those. I need to protect him from the fluorescent harshness of the unknown. I'm full of guilt about not letting this happen at home, so I create a home so big with my body that he will see and feel it like I'm holding up an IMAX panorama on my shirt. I keep my promises, right? His breathing slows. I have to give him permission. Like your children shoot you one nervous glance as they put their feet on the school bus, and with a slow blink, you tell them that the ride will be a good one. The purple blanket will keep you safe. On cue, mercy descends. With my lips on his head, he takes a clear, unsnarfled, untumored, unweasy breath. I keep my promises, I whisper. I told you when we moved here that the ocean would cure you. And then, with a gentle spasm, the school bus drives off. He still is a bus driver. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of just like you actually didn't really leave the whole bus driver metaphor behind. But he's like, it's, it's a fun Now he's a student, he now he's a kid on the bus. I was just like, wow, that's like Beautiful. so crazy to think about your cat dying. Wait, did you ever have to watch your cat die? Both. It was horrible. But it's also, it was so time. I mean. I'll never forget watching Sonoma, our cat, before I was five. And they when they put the blue juice in her <laughs> Sonoma and Napa, named after the wine valleys. My, my parents love wine. Um, <laughs> just watching. Th those were also from a cat show? Or? I don't know actually wh what their provenance was. Um, they were from the like the <laughs> 70s. Um, <Okay. laughs> and just seeing like, she was 19 and a half. She was old no. as hell, but seeing the life drain out seeing of her. Seeing them go limp is so hard. And then I have to remember just like, and the drive, I mean, with Audrey, you're like the drive there and they're like, she's in the back in the crate and you're like, you don't know what's coming. Oh God, no. Yeah, that was like when I watched that rabbit get killed 
last year for me, and then we ate the rabbit. <laughs> a little different, but yeah. That. But the animal not knowing what's coming and having no choice. I didn't choice. eat my Abyssinian, okay? <laughs> I got Dunkin' Donuts like a good Bostonian before. Oh, well, I will say, yeah, the meal that I had. Oh, and also it's like, I feel like we were like petting her and holding her paws. And what was so, I feel like hard, definitely with like Audrey and like the choice to put down mm. and he says in here, like a lot of times like humans hang on longer than they should for themselves. Mm. It, like, is really hard to tell because, like, I feel like you're, like, okay, she's in pain. But then they're, like, she was still purring. So you're, like, wait, like, are you in pain? But then you're, like, oh. But as Jackson eat. says, purring isn't always a sign of pleasure. Yes. Sometimes it's, it's just, like, a noise. Some, or they're trying to soothe themselves. Mm. So I think I've heard also in cat books wow. and tips and tricks. And then, of course, it's so insane and twisted. And they're, like... Um, and take all the time you want. Um, and then we can talk about options for cream. Oh, God. And then they're just like, so um, you can get this mahogany box with like an imprint of their paw. That's six. That <laughs> and that's just with just their ashes. You could get their ashes, but it'll be mixed with about a thousand other cats ashes. <laughs> Or there's just the dumpster, um, and that's three hundred. Three and you're three hundred like, for us yeah. to literally chuck it in the dumpster behind <laughs> the bed. There's also wait, I've seen the company on Shark Tank that's just called like Paw Forever, and it's like we'll take your cat's ashes and fuse them into a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like this diamond is like 0.01% your cat's ashes. What? Yeah, it's like mostly plastic <laughs> and 0.001% your cat's ashes. I mean, I might. <laughs> a ring. <laughs> um, like a beautiful, like a black diamond. On <laughs> Celebrity Book Club. Sad? Burnt out? Want to kill your husband? Honey, you're not alone, but here's the issue. <laughs> it's not him, it's you. You're stressed and anxious, you need therapy. BetterHelp is an incredible online therapy website app service that connects you to certified mental health professionals. I obviously use this brand because I would never read an ad for a brand that I don't personally use because I'm not a liar. And one of the things that I do when I'm not lying is speak to my better health therapist openly and honestly about the things that cause me stress. And then, you know, she can be very, she can be challenging, but also validating. And I love that tension. And now I can be a better partner and friend um, and tenant, which is key. So, if you want to have a better relationship with your landlord, go to betterhelp.com slash cbc to get 10% off your first month. Again, betterhelp.com slash cbc. It's 10% off your first month. Try it out. How does she meow? What does she meow? How does she meow? Okay, what does he eat? Eat. Well, now he's vegan. He lost a lot of weight. He got gastric bypass. Basically, they were like, you're going to... He was... Oh, this was so depressing. He was like calling his mom and she was like, can you do something? He's like, oh, well, I can't because I can't like put on shoes today. And she was yeah, like... Yeah, that part was really... Yeah. What? I mean, that was really overlapping with the Jared the Subway book a little bit. Yes. And it was also so like nurse mom... But she was like, you're going through like an app, like you're about to have yeah, a heart she's attack. Like, you if you need can't to get to the hospital right now. Like, this is not right. <laughs> so he does go ahead and f he also finds like he, another lover who I don't think is his current wife now that he does like, does get with him at 400 pounds. And he like doesn't think love is possible. He doesn't really describe the gen breakup. He's just like, yeah, it was time. But he, this new girlfriend, he moved to California. So I feel like it's like he's just super fresh California vegan, like avocados, quinoa. And tempa and being so like veggie burger. I mean, he's making weird yeah. soups like Eric Adams is telling him to. Um, Definitely. <laughs> blending stuff. And These are his kind of sister books in a way that Eric Adams spoke in this book. <laughs> Eric Adams. The subway, subway guy, guy and cat daddy. Like, no, the three. I would sell that as like a gorgeous, like kind of like collection you can buy in a box set. <laughs> what does he wear? So he's cool and vintage and rockabilly, and he has your dream style. He literally is my dream style. He wears like black button downs with like different 
drawings of chicks and leopard print, and he has big sideburns, and uh, yeah, basically just like pimp freaking style. He does have that like vegan gastric bypass like body a little bit, where it is he's he's always gonna. It's, yes, there, there's the a gauntification is... that's happening and he's always going to look like he lost a lot of weight because it's like the, sh- the clothes are still going to hang off him in this way that's like not quite like he's not well, quite used right, to his body okay, you know? there's that rockabilly brand I got my shoes from straight to hell that I love and like all their clothes are really tiny but I feel like there's also like bigger rockabilly clothes that I have I don't know and like it's not like he's like a skinny he's still like really tall it has that like Bill Clinton yeah Eric Adams like you, you know what I'll say he dresses <laughs> like and is also definitely uh, voting for is he dresses like a Marianne Williamson supporter and he is definitely voting for Marianne Williamson because he dresses like a magician. Yes, it's it is like and I will call myself and like I'm always calling myself rockabilly, but like but you're not you're not like so vest and like you're not so like purple vest like he's way more purple vest or like red there's like a side of rockabilly of just leopard print, black button down, red. You're tie, not going to be that just, rid- ridiculous, Cherry Poppin' daughters. No, and I'm not wearing like everyone at the Mary Williamson fundraiser I went to was yet. wearing just like a bowler hat with a feather and then like six vests. And well, and especially like the way his with also Mary Williamson circus is that like his facial hair is like so constructed into like little pointy pieces. It's really, really crazy. There's so many pieces to it. It's not just chops. It's chops and the twirly. And then there's like lanes in it. There's like, there's like a full maze happening. And what's like super nineties, early two thousands is, is the glasses are like, Kind of just like, it's not like, oh, he just like got the Ray-Ban glasses. Like he kind of just got like the most modern Ad, that lens crafters, lens crafters, crafters has. There's like big green bands on the sides and like, they're like slim. Cause he's like, I'm a modern. Well, that's marker. cause like, you know, <laughs> most people are not trying to be so Warby Parker with their glasses and they just are getting the most normal lens crafters glasses. And that's actually more punk. It really is. Okay, how does he live? Obviously, like, I'm sure he has a new cat and there's 18,000, like, cat condos and, like, he just lives in an obstacle course. And I feel like the coloring of his house feels very Venice Beach to me. Like, I feel like it's, like, a cat condo and there's, like, a green room with has, like, tons of rock posters and then there's, like, an orange room and a purple room. I think the the variety of intensely saturated hues is great. I think there is a purple rug and a green wall and then an orange room. Um, And each room is a little bit different. And it has, yeah, I feel like there's an under cat system and a higher cat system. But I feel like the house is very, like, not, it's very, like, it was built in 2003. Yeah, not, no, I don't see him with a vintage house, I guess. And he, and, like, yeah, he is maybe, like, above ground pool. Huh. I see him, honestly, like, maybe it came with it, but I think he's a little bit nervous around water, like a cat. Oh, wow, because he's so feline. I think he's that feline, and maybe, like, body image issue stuff, like, but also feline. I don't see him, like, swimming so much. Okay, yeah, I mean, that actually makes a ton of sense. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's, like, mass, massive weight loss and cat guy, yeah, not, a, not big into swimming. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, who are you in the book? Um, mm. are you Valoria? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so skinny. Stop chasing me. Mm, I hate it when you chase me. <laughs> I imagine like Valoria to like a white cat too, and you're like on Jackson's chest, being like, "Yeah, it's Valoria time." <sighs> <laughs> <sighs> um Purring. are you Benny? I mean you're not so injured. Um No. Benny has like a real heart and Benny is like yeah, really going through it. I mean am I Beth? <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, you need to move out with your sober BS. <laughs> You're like, you and your new Ren Fair girlfriend and your like cat who needs a hip replacement. Like, I'm actually done. Yeah, no, and I do, and I, you are Beth, and I want you to like also continue to find your inner Beth and like find the lesbian who's going to stand up to your messy friends and just be like, no, not today. Right, that's true. She's a boss ass bitch. Boss bitch. I think I need to find, need to be more like Beth. Boss Beth. <laughs> Boss Beth. Um, I give this book 
seven paw prints out of five. I think there's tons of like really good tips, movie moments. You like learn a lot. I guess the con for me is like maybe it's because I am the cat person. I feel like I didn't like learn totally like so many like new tricks for my cat. I guess I wasn't, yeah, hoping for tricks. I I appreciate the philosophy about it because like I thought that that was like that actually might be more useful to me going forward. If one day I do decide to become an adult feline owner, I want... Guardian. To th- uh, sorry, go- guardian, guardian. A feline guardian. It's like, I want to understand the cat's motivations versus having like special things to do. Because I get that it's like, yeah, it's about treats I and do it's think, about yeah, toys and it's about play, playing. But- I do think one should definitely... Good read if you're thinking about becoming a guardian. Yeah, I give it 3.5 and it was it was surprisingly beautiful and interesting. And I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I knew he was a rocker, but I guess I didn't really know, you know, kind of like his addiction journey and he's very strong. It's beautiful, it's relatable, it's flawed. Like there's, you know, I think that's was he wasn't like and I'm clean now. He's like I got clean and then I ate 500 burgers. Like I think my one thing it's like I think obviously there's limitations to the science in this book. He is not a scientist and so I would have appreciated more about the history of cats, more about the science behind cats. I feel like that's know. another book, but I And that you. that is another book, but yeah. it's you know cuz of course that's like the shade that I was hoping for a little bit yeah. more of, just like a more rigorous academic um, angle but ultimately yeah really nice job Jackson yeah shout out um, would love to collab please send us photos of your cats yeah send it drop send us for your cats and we'll post that ah! we love you club kids we Meow. love you bye per best. best this episode of Celebrity Book Club was produced and edited by Max Miller original theme song by Stephen Phillips Horst graphic design by Teddy Blanks at Chips and Wine Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CBC The Pod. Don't forget to sign up for our Patreon VIP lounge to get an extra episode every single Friday. And please, I am begging you, leave a review on Apple. Pull your weight around here. Best. <laughs>